This is the voice of the report of the week. Signing off. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone listening, this is the report of the week here. This is my little podcast, the voice of the report of the week, where, well, it is my voice, and I just uh, speak my mind. I share different thoughts. I read some fan mail and just uh, you, get to, you get to know me a little better. So uh, it's, you know, it's Monday, September the 8th, 2014. Um, here we are. Here we sit. Here I am at the microphone. So that's that. So here we are. Starting off the week. Yeah. What are you going to do? It, uh, you know, well, it is what it is. Every Monday, it's the same deal, you know. Got to, uh... Got to go in, whether you like it or not, and work to the Friday. And then we're off for two days, and then we're back. So, you know, it'll be, um... It'll happen. It happens. <sighs> so here we are. I'm sitting here listening to uh, Radio Kuwait. I'm sorry if you uh, you hear any voice in the background. That's, that's nothing else than that. I should shut the audio off because, because I like to uh, I like to play a lot of pop music and what have you and. Surely, if this microphone picks it up clear enough, uh, well, I'll get copyright strike, and there goes this show, and probably the channel with it. Let's shut that off. Um, well, here we are. Here we are, indeed. <sighs> yep. That's that. How are you doing today? How are you doing on this Monday? It's September, it's, uh, huh? Oh. Still the beginning of September, so you know I can't say September's speeding by, but um, well, soon we're gonna be halfway through September, and then three quarters, and then it'll be October, and then Halloween, and then Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and we'll be right back at the start. So it'll go by. Before you know it, it'll be Tuesday. By the time this gets uploaded, it'll probably be. Probably be either Monday evening or maybe Tuesday dawn, but um, some some point this will get up. Do not fear. Do not worry. We're two minutes in. So I've been looking through the uh, fan mail recently, and I've noticed oh, the turnout was a little bit light today. So with that being said, I'm going to read and respond to the fan mail as I always do, and then I'm going to play a short lecture of mine. Uh, well, it's actually not too short. It's about 15 minutes in length. And that'll be what closes off the show. Now, this lecture of mine, uh, which you'll hear once I finish all the fan mail, it's um, a lecture I recorded a couple nights ago when I was feeling like uh, doing so. And what it was about was... Uh, I just talked about how, you know, the way I dress, how it really conflicts with, you know, what the general public would expect me to wear. And, uh, you know, how I cope and deal with, uh, you know, standing out and uh, looking different from everyone else. Um, so if you listen to that, I don't know if anyone will get anything out of it, but I hope you listen to it. I um, hope you at least try to enjoy it. If you can't, it's no one's fault. Everyone has different tastes, different interests, different likes. So, uh, no harm done with that. If you're curious as to whether... Um, well, right now it's 74 degrees. It's cooled down a bit. 61% humidity. Uh, yeah, it's it's cooled down. It's supposed to be a little cooler for the next few days. Uh, that is for sure. The heat wave broke finally. And so after days of wearing only shirt and tie sets, I could finally at least comfortably wear the long sleeves. I never have. Even in these 90, 100 degree days, I've still worn long sleeves and pants every day, and I've never never rolled the sleeves up uh, or loosened the tie or any of those measures um, but now I could wear long sleeves and even a suit jacket comfortably again uh, so that's nice that's nice I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to do I'm trying to uh, make use of uh, the pocket watch again even if I'm not wearing a vest I'm gonna try and make use of the pocket watch you know try and wear it even with uh, even with just dress pants uh, cause I have a few pocket watches and I realize I haven't been wearing them lately, so uh, 
I'm gonna try and make the most out of them. You know, so if I ever go out for walks or go into town for lunch or errands or what have you, I don't want to keep track of the time. I don't need to use the phone. I could use a pocket watch, uh, which I plan on doing. Yeah. I figure I'd rather put them to good use than let them sit there. So that I will. Five minutes in, let's check out the fan mail. What little there is. And if you're curious, tonight, um, I'm going to Wendy's again. And once again, I'm gonna, assuming they still have it. That's taking a risk in itself. But assuming they still have it, I'm gonna try and make my rounds with that new uh, uh, chicken sandwich that they have. Uh, let me actually just check their, uh, let me check their site right now. All right. Wendy's. Wendy's.com, alright, that's convenient. Yeah, alright, they still have it. Uh, smoked Gouda chicken on brush. So, we're going to, uh... Oh, we're gonna try that. We're gonna see if they have it first. If they do, I'll get it. I'll review it. And I'll put the review up tonight. So, the last time I went to Wendy's, you know what happened? They gave me the wrong thing. They gave me the wrong thing. I think they gave me about 10 chicken nuggets instead of that. So, this time I'm going to very clearly specify it. And if I seem like, you know, a jerk to them, I don't care. Um, I'm, on, I'm a man on a mission right here now. So, assuming they're even open, assuming there aren't, there isn't, you know, a, uh, an angry mob, right, surrounding the edifice because no one else got their beautiful smoked gouda chicken on brioche. Um, assuming there's none of that, well then, I'll just look in the bag. Now, I usually go through the drive through mind you. Um, I'll look in the bag, and I'll make sure, I'll even open up a little box and make sure that sandwich is there. I don't care what they think of me, um, I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up to them, right? Yeah. <sighs> Just trying to get a chicken sandwich, that's it. I take this stuff very seriously. Right? As we all should. Chicken sandwiches are, are a serious business. What's going on in the world? Well, got some sports news. Ray Rice cut by Ravens and suspended by the NFL. There's an unidentified respiratory virus that's likely to hit kids all across the country. Arab states join forces against ISIS, so it looks like there might be a coalition uh, force going against them. The U.S. military has set up a field hospital in Ebola-stricken Liberia. And finally, in Ukraine, that ceasefire has pretty much shattered as fighting resumes. That's what's happening in the world today. Now to fan mail. Let's see where it is. Let's see where we left off. Okay. <laughs> I think that's where we left off. Yeah. Okay. Salutations report of the week. I don't know whether you've talked about it before, but how do you feel about facial hair? Beards and mustaches in particular. I feel that they've been misused the same way the fedora has. It seems that beards have caught on in popular culture and they look out of place so much on many of the people who wear them. Basically, the same young people who wear tight-fitted suits seem to be wearing beards and they cannot pull them off, in my opinion. Would you ever wear a beard or a mustache? I personally cannot grow proper facial hair. I don't know if you can either, but I'd be curious to know just the same. Also, I think it would be kind of cool for you to take a camera out to one of your night walks and record a VRW while you take a stroll. Take care. Ed. Yeah, uh, well, beards and facial hair, yeah, it certainly became a little more popular among some crowds. Yeah, mostly the same, you know, fashionable, right, people who uh, enjoy those terrible tight-fitting suits and, you know, a lot of the hipster crowd also. Um, you know, and I got nothing against those people, I just don't like the way they dress. Um, that's it. But, yeah, I think the beard has... has Maybe not to such an extreme, but it has gone the way of the fedora as of late, where if you grow a beard, chances are you're going to end up looking like maybe someone who you're not, you know. Um, 
I don't think I'd be able to pull off the beard. I really can't see how it would even look with a beard. Um, I don't know if it would be a real, a real pleasant sight. Now, mustache, once again, I really don't know how I would be able to, to look like that. Um, there's a chance that if I did draw a mustache, I might end up looking like someone who I really don't want to look like. If you know what I'm implying, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but there's certain people with certain types of mustaches who aren't good people. Not all of them, but it's a commonly associated one. And, um, just trying to keep it appropriate here. But, um, otherwise, if I grew a mustache, maybe, maybe I'd go for, like, a, a pencil mustache, like one of those little thin ones. Um, or if I really had the capability, I'd go the full-out mustache, and then, you know, curl it, like, slick it, or curl it, or whatever. I'd go for that early 1900s look, but, um, even then, I don't know how that would look with me. I was actually thinking about, uh, hair. Hair, not facial hair. No, just my regular hair that sits on top of my head. No, no, I'm not bald. I, 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 this is real hair. Perpetually slicked, right? And I was thinking, I'm thinking one day I'm just gonna try this out. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try different things with my hair. I'm gonna try to um, maybe part it on the other side, slick it back completely with no part, and part it in the middle and just see how each one looks, you know, in comparison. Um, I'd just be curious as to how they look. I was thinking about the middle part. You, you, have you ever seen anyone in real life with an actual like middle parted hairstyle? And not someone like not not like the Kurt Cobain, you know, one, but I'm talking about like the actual old fashioned like middle part where they actually have, you know, the hair parted in the middle and then slicked still. Uh, I don't think I ever have. I mean maybe I have but just never thought about it. But um I think it's a very rare hairstyle nowadays, even rarer than mine. Um I'd be curious to see how I'd look with that. Likewise, parted on the other side and slipped all the way back. So I'd be curious about that. I would. Getting back to the computer here. And uh, that's an interesting idea about the uh, night walks. Like, uh, if, I, if I'm able to bring the small portable mic just to talk. I don't think anyone would bat an eye because no one's there anyways. So I don't think that would cause much problem. This is private, I already responded to this guy. On your last VORW, I sent you a message saying that you are a buttercup. Yes, yes, that made my day. You are a daisy. Oh, that's awesome. Keep it up. P.S. I have listened to about 20 VORWs in the past week, or so, and now I'm sad to know that I have to wait days now to listen to them as I'm all caught up. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the... Unfortunate apprehension, which we almost suffer through from the period between uploads. P.S.S. You're still a buttercup. Awesome to know. P.S.S.S. I've lost my train of thought. Okay. P.S.S.S.S. Going to work out now. Please bless my gains. You're going to get them gains, brah. That you will. That you will. P.S. S S S S. Also, I wait your review of the Mountain Dew Kickstarter. Like that one. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, just uploaded the review before it was sent. Finally, P S S S S S S. You're a daisy. Keep it up. Excellent. Beautiful message right there. Dear review, bro. I went through a phase of amphetamine use, however I gradually switched to a high caffeine intake via caffeine pills and energy drinks which I've currently cut down to one energy drink per day. You've said in your VORW shows that you are taking caffeine pills and energy drinks which no longer have a real effect on you. How many milligrams are in those caffeine pills? Also have you considered taking adrenal or any other kind of stimulant drugs? How do you feel about drug use considering caffeine is a drug too? <sighs> Uh, nowadays, well, the caffeine pills, I really, uh, not sure. Actually, let me see if I could, uh, I haven't paid attention to that really. Let me see if I could see the caffeine pills right here. Um, if I could find the little box that they're in. Where, where to place them? If I can't find them, I can't find them, but you have me curious now as to, uh, as to what they, they are, what the caffeine content of them is. Let me see, are these, these are caffeine pills? 
No. No. Oh, well. If I can't find them, I can't find them. Um. Oh, I'm not gonna spend the entire, you know. I'm not gonna spend the entire time, you know, sitting here searching for, for those caffeine pills. You know. So. We can't find them, we can't find them. I'd say, I'd say, I'm just taking a guess here, but I would say probably, you know, maybe 200 milligrams per, per pill. Uh, once again, if I had them to look at, you know, that'd make things easier than I'd be able to, you know, find them. Just read it off right from the box, but it doesn't look like we can. No, these, um, no, another old box. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, here, here they are. Yeah, 200 milligrams of caffeine per pill. Box was right in front of me. I couldn't even look right over it. Well, that's what happens. That's what happens to me. Um, nowadays, though, I've had a habit. I've actually uh, I've taken someone's advice, and I've actually been going out for lunch uh, almost every day now. I've been going into town, and uh, I've been stopping at a Dunkin' Donuts. Um on occasion for my meal and well this isn't going to continue for much longer because the temperature is the way it is it's going to cool down but um for just you know two bucks or so they've been having a large iced coffee large i think that's almost 32 fluid ounces iced coffee i get it with cream and sugar and I just drink that probably within, you know, 15 minutes. Set sets me for the whole day, you know? I mean, there's a a great deal of caffeine in that. So, you know. Great deal of caffeine in that. Um, you know, so. Usually that gets rid of any sign of tiredness or alert. Or <laughs> yeah, just tiredness. I end up having throughout the evening. The drug use you asked, um, you know, say no to drugs, kids. I personally, well, caffeine is my exception. It's a stimulant, I know, but at least it doesn't have too many devastating effects, you know. Uh, really doesn't, in my opinion. You know, there's certainly worse you could take than caffeine. But, um, you know, a lot of them have pretty bad effects on life. You gotta keep that in mind, you know. Love your reviews and your VORW shows. It really helped me through my depression and helps to get my day started. I think you are a fantastic and unique individual, and I wish you, wish you the best. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, and I wish you the best as well. Hey, just listened to VRW 56 and I heard about the 14 year old yep, with the uh, Slender Man. They should probably get the book thrown at him, but I was wondering what's your opinion on corporal punishment? Do you think it's morally acceptable to take the life of someone who has taken someone else's or multiple people's lives? Looking forward to hearing your opinion on the subject from Snape in Australia. Well, now, the death penalty is a very controversial topic, I will say. Um, I'm just going to give an opinion, alright, I'm not going to say whether I directly or indirectly support it, but I'll say an opinion. When it comes to punishment-wise, depends on the person, and what they did. I remember I took a criminal justice class, and this is a topic that we discussed. And it was interesting, because the speaker proved the point. He said, you know, if the death penalty... may not be the harshest punishment around. Now, of course, there's torture, but that's cruel and unusual punishment. But he said, the death penalty, yeah, you kill the person, but once you're dead, you're dead, you know? You're not going to be back on Earth, you know? So once you're dead, you're gone, you're dead. He was saying that, he proved the point, he said, in some cases, life in prison without parole, no chance of getting out, especially if the person commits such a grievous crime at a young age, is worse than the death penalty. Because you're going to be spending your entire life in prison having to think about what you did to get in there. 
Now, of course, you have some people who are mentally insane and won't even come to their senses for decades. But you have some people who are remorseful. And he said, and those people would be the ones, you know, who should get life in prison without parole. So they could think about what they did and what got them in there for the rest of their life. Well, that was an interesting point. Um, well, another case that was argued against life in prison is that, well, when you have these old men in prison, they're probably not going to harm anyone. You know, we're just wasting money on keeping them in there. That was one economic case brought up. But um, it was an interesting thing. Dear Report of the Week, have you ever considered launching your own line of energy drinks, perhaps called Energy Crisis, and say if you want to, what flavor is we to go for? Regards. That's interesting. I remember back in 2011, I uh, found a perfect name for an energy drink, and that's, uh, maybe they already created one, but this is before. Let's see. No, I don't think they made it yet. See, I was thinking of uh, making an energy drink back in 2011 called Zipline. Isn't that an awesome name for, like, an energy drink? Zipline? <laughs> I don't know. But, um... What would I, what am I, what would I make it flavored? Um, well, I might go for that generic soda type flavor. But I also kind of want to do a cherry flavor. But it would be good. It wouldn't be like a cherry cough medicine. It would actually be, like, good. Um, maybe something like that. It would be interesting, you know, certainly. Hi, if you brought one short question, aren't you concerned about your health? I'm sure all those energy drinks and pizzas are not good for your health. And you work out to compensate for all those calories. Cheers. Uh, I do not. I walk. But I don't work out. And, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm past that, uh... I figure I'm just going to enjoy things, and, uh, you know, that's that. I don't eat like this every day, but I'm not going to stop, mind you. So, you know, on the portrayal of my videos, it makes it seem, oh, yeah, I, well, I do take caffeine every day, keep that in mind, but it's not like I eat an entire pizza or, you know, some sort of fried meal each and every day. Um, now, with that being said, yes, of course, it's unhealthy. I understand that. Um, but you have to understand that there are a few things in this world nowadays that I find solace in. And a good meal is one of them. And I'm not going to stop that. So I hope I'm just saying it as it is. Alright, just uh, three more and then the show is over. Hello, firstly, I really enjoy your channel and I'm somewhat of a new subscriber. And I have a few questions for VRW if you don't mind. Is it possible for you to review Relentless Energy Drinks on Energy Crisis? They're a big thing over here in the UK and wondered, on your opinion, if you could get a hold of one. Well, Relentless Energy Drinks, uh, that is an interesting... I've heard of it. Now, will I be able to review it? I can't guarantee, but I'll see what I can do. I was thinking of getting into shortwave radio, but I have no real idea where to start. Any tips and or resources? I want to start out listening online, preferably if that's possible. Thanks for your time. Yeah, uh, what I recommend is, uh, if you have free time, if, if you have free time, check back in my videos, and you'll find a few of the old VORW shows, pretty far back, a couple months back, uh, where I describe in great detail over the course of several episodes, shortwave radio, the premise of it, many main stations, and how to listen online, and the basics of it so you'll know what to do when you go in. Uh, so check those out, there's some of the earlier VORWs, and uh, Wish you the best for that. Two questions regarding pizza, sir. One, what is your opinion on Hawaiian, aka ham and pineapple pizza? You know, I've had it from time to time. Um, you know, that I had. 
but it's not something I'll get regularly, you know. I'm not, not a, I can't say it's my favorite pizza in the world or anything like that, but it's not a bad pizza. Um, certainly not. Certainly not at all. So there's been worse, uh, you know, but I always prefer classic pepperoni and bacon pizza for me. And two, have you ever burned your mouth or tongue by eating pizza? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, the other day I had a pizza slice and it was so hot, burned the tip of my tongue and I couldn't really feel anything on it for a bit, but it's gone. The burn is gone, not the tongue. I had to clarify that. And this guy says, love your channel. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Just checking the time. Um, let's see, I think we got one. No, two more. Two more, and then that's that for today. Hey, man, just thought I would say I enjoy watching your food review videos. I find them pretty funny and informing. Keep them up. Also, not sure if you're aware, but if you drink a can of... A, a big can of energy drink, uh, like that a day in the long run that could cause to heart problems and defects and also stomach problems yep it's like cancer in a can but i still drink it i actually burnt my stomach's inner lining and have been suffering with bad gastros gastritis and acid burn i drank energy drinks for about four months straight at times and more than one a day maybe more which is ultimately uh, came to an end in Thailand when I collapsed and was taken to the hospital, and that was three years ago. Still fearing, feeling it when things flare up. Oh, the Red Bull is super strong here. Just be careful and conscious on how much you consume. And we keep up the good work and enjoy what you're doing. Cheers from England. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm well aware of what, what I'm doing when I drink these and the effects uh, thereof. You know. But, um, thank you for the advice, for the insight. And finally, what is your opinion on swearing slash swear words and rude language? You generally avoid swearing on your videos, but is that representative of your daily life? Regards. Uh, nowadays, yes. Yeah, I never swear. Um, never. When people, I don't know, when people swear, it just casts down an unprofessional, especially like in, in professional conversation if someone's swearing. It just gives, it just gives a very unprofessional, um, you know, appearance, uh, and it's very ill-fitting. Uh, but I don't swear. Um, I'm not gonna lie, when I was younger, I, I used to, but um, uh, I never do. Uh, never, not at home, not in public. The only time something ever might slip out. Actually, there's only two two times nowadays that something might ever slip out. Uh, number one, if I'm home by myself and I accidentally, you know, m maybe bang my knee, I might say something. Or uh, if I'm playing eight ball pool, that usually gets me uh, pretty worked up. Um, but other than that, never. Um, you know, I'm not gonna stop say I'm not gonna say, oh, you shouldn't swear this and that, but I just don't. Um, I think a conversation can still be carried out without having to, you know, say an expletive is every other word. But, um, yeah. To each his own. Thank you for listening. This is VOIW, the voice of the report of the week. Send us your comments, questions, concerns, anything else. Send us a message via YouTube. YouTube.com slash report of the week. Send us a message, and we'll read and respond to it at the beginning of each and every show, as we always do. Come up next is a brief lecture of mine. It's pretty much about being yourself and going out and about and dealing with other people. The lecture is about 15 to 16 minutes in length. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, and have a great day. Hello, and thank you for joining us at VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week. This is your host, the Report of the Week speaking, and I'll be giving a short lecture on going out and about and being yourself at the same time. You know, in society, one way or the other, conformity is everywhere. Many people, whether they know it or not, 
are just like the next person. It could be anything. It could be the way you dress, the way you talk, what technology you have, what music you like, this, that, and the other thing. Conformity is everywhere. And while an ideology is now promoted nowadays, saying, be yourself, be yourself, right? Go out, live life, and be yourself. Never change, right? While that ideology is promoted, it's not really enforced in the real world. Even to this day, even while that ideology is getting promoted more and more, you can still go outside, and you can still be subject to mockery and insult by complete strangers because, well, you're not the same as they are. And it's still very common in today's world, and there's nothing you can do about it. Look at me. Mostly the way I dress, the way I present myself. Over the time, I have been a prime target of such things. To the point where sometimes I'll reconsider if I have to go outside or not. Now, when I say go outside, that doesn't mean, oh, stop outside, you know, what have you. It means running out to the store, or to the mall, or to the theater, or to anywhere for that matter. And it makes me have second thoughts. It makes me second guess myself. What if, I sometimes ask myself, what if you run into someone with a loud mouth and no self-control, and something happens? What if, I sometimes ask myself. And because of that, it has detracted, on occasion, from going out and enjoying things that I would have liked to do. It really has. Over the years I've thought about this, I've came up with a few things to consider and to think positively so I could still go out, enjoy life, and ignore what everyone else has to say. Allow me to start off with a little story from my past. The year is 2011. I remember the day very well. I went out to the mall. Now, it was on a Friday night. It was a very crowded place. People of all ages were there. Adults coming home from work. Children and teenagers at the mall after school. I remember that day I was wearing a suit. I was wearing my regular attire for the day. I think I was wearing a brown suit. Sometimes when you remember a day very vividly, or a specific memory, you could actually also remember what you were wearing, or at least think you know what you were wearing. I think I was wearing a brown suit at the time. I remember going to the mall. Now, before this experience, I never once was really that self-conscious of not how I looked, but how people looked at me. Never before did I really think at least too much of that. Sure, the thought might have come to mind every now and then, but I really didn't think about it much. But after what happened that evening, I began to think of that more and more until it was nearly continual. I remember going into the crowded food court, and I glanced over to my left as I heard a piercing noise. I look over to my left, and, and, and there's this group of, of kids at the time, I don't remember if they were my age or a year older, a year younger, I'd say around my age, give or take a year, laughing as loud as they possibly could, and they were looking right at me. And at first I said, no, they're, they're laughing at something else. But then I look over, because at first I thought, you know, no one could be laughing that loud and that ridiculous because some guy is wearing a suit. It just isn't possible. But I glance over again and I, I, I see this there was about a crowd of, I'd say five or, or six of them. And this one girl that's with them is, uh, I think trying to, in a hushed tone you could clearly hear the person over the entire food court, so I guess it wasn't that quiet. 
in almost a hushed tone, saying, shh, shh, stop, stop, he's looking right at us, stop. And that's when it hit me like a ton of bricks. These people, all five or six of them, were laughing, and they're making sure I heard it too, right at me, simply because I wasn't wearing the clothing that they were wearing. Oh, so what? You know, you might say. For good reason, you might say, oh, so what? You know, a couple of stupid kids with no self-control and a developing mind. So what? Well, after that experience, I realized. I began to look more and more at how people thought of me when I was in public. And I began to take it out on myself. I thought, why do you wear these outfits when no one else does? Look at what you're subjecting yourself to. And over time, I became more and more self-conscious of how I looked. And though I never did stop dressing as I do, and I don't think I will ever, at least for the definite future, I began getting a little paranoid. Whenever I would go out, at first it, it didn't really stop too my, many things. But then as I went out more and more, I began looking around and I began thinking to myself, I hear those people behind me talking, they're probably talking about me and how stupid I look. Or as I'm walking past a crew of people, I might hear a few giggles and I think, and they're laughing at me, aren't they? I had this ideology for a good long time. I, I no longer have that, though I still do have anxiety, so that does, you know sometimes detract, but at least I got rid of the major ideology that they're all laughing at me, they're all talking about me, each and every last person. No matter the size of the crew or the location, they have to be talking and laughing at me in a negative manner. I had that ideology for years. In fact, uh, back in 2011, it used to be a tradition of mine on Saturdays. I would go out to a restaurant with the family. Uh, it was mostly a type of restaurant, like a, could be a local Italian, it was a sit-down restaurant, right? And most of the time on a Saturday evening, a lot of other families are there. But soon I stopped doing that, because I thought, why bother when everyone else in the restaurant is looking at how I'm dressed and is laughing at me and is mocking me, why bother anymore? But then I came to realize a few things. Over time, and from various lessons learned, and partly because of this a channel here, and even various words of wisdom that I've received from other people. But over time, and into 2014, I realized, yes, there are going to be idiots out there. There are going to be scumbags. There are going to be people who, well, you might want to call names that are a lot worse than a scumbag. Those people are out there, and they are out there in great number. They don't care about you, they don't care about your feelings, they don't care. Hey, yeah, listen, you could go to hell for all I'm concerned. That's their ideology, that's what they think. You're insignificant. But the one time they do care about you, is when they're talking about you or focusing in on you in a negative manner. There are plenty of people like that in this world, and never forget that. But compared to that, there are many, many more people who either A, just don't care at all, will walk right past you and won't even notice you, or B, might think, you know, something other than I think, oh, he's wearing a suit, maybe he's got something to do, or maybe he just wants to dress well. And don't think anything more of that. Those are the two main types of people that are out there. They have better things to do. They have no reason, they have nothing against you, they have no reason to take things out on you. Those are the two main types of people out there. And soon I began to realize when I'm walking past people, they're not talking about me. So what if they are? So you've got to realize, number one, the general public is not out to get you. They aren't. They may not be your friends, 
but they're certainly not your enemies. A second thing I learned over the years. Don't care. Now, what do you mean by don't care? Simple. Don't care. If someone's laughing, and you think that they're laughing or mocking you, so what? What, do you get, what would you do about it anyways? Would you go over there and swear at them and yell at them and potentially either A, make a fool out of yourself even further, or B, dig yourself into a deeper hole and possibly one thing could lead to another and you could possibly deal them with a physical altercation. That is not a good thing. So, so what? You're going to get someone here and there who just is a jerk. They might make comments. I might do something. I might say something. You gotta ignore them. Those people are going to be around, whether you like it or not, and there's nothing that you can do about it except ignore them. They don't exist. They don't exist. Oh, I didn't hear what he said. You completely black it out, ignore it, and you carry on as usual. Because if you even take the time to focus in on what they said and think about it, they won. Even more. You gave them the light of day and then you dwelled on it. They won. Never give in to them. Ignore them. And finally, and most importantly, Never change. Keep it professional. Keep it business. Never change. Live life and enjoy life. If you want to go out and see a movie but you're a little concerned about what people might think of you or how they might look at you, so what? Go out there and live life. Because if you let things like this continuously hold you back from the things that you like to do and the things that you enjoy, then what's the point? What's the point? You live only once. So why waste it? Why waste it thinking about what everyone else is going to care and how they'd all be laughing at you, which they really won't be. But you might think that they are. Why waste it on that, when you should be out there enjoying yourself? Because in the end, you might say, oh, I'm so nervous, I'm so worried about this and that, and, and going here and there, because what, what will they think of me? You know what you'll be saying in the end if you do go? Huh, oh, that was awesome, I really enjoyed it. It went better than I expected. You have to make the most out of everything. Sometimes, if things might seem really difficult, look at the end of things. For instance, say you want to have a very nice dinner at a restaurant, right? It's going to be crowded, and you think, oh, all these people there, they're going to be thinking this and that about me. So what? They're not going to say or do anything. They're just going to sit there and eat their meals. And it might seem difficult, but think about what you'll be getting out of it in the end. You'll be getting a great, wholesome meal. Now, of course, it's not all about food, but that's just an example. Because chances are, if you're worried about something like that holding you back, what you get in the end is always worth it. Thank you very much for listening. This is Report of the Week, and this is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week.